Hello community. Why is the data structure of PyTree in JAX and in Flax now the optimal data structure for this computation? And I try here chat GPT, the free version, not the plus version, in the version of March 14. And chat GPT tells me PyTrees are the data structure used in JAX to represent structured data such as nested collections of array or dictionary. And here we have again our nested dictionary. The primary benefit of using PyTrees is that they enable efficient manipulation of structured data by taking advantage of JAX just-in-time compilation and accelerated linear algebra optimization. So now, very easily, the PyTree structure is not for us human, but for machine compilation. One reason why PyTrees are considered optimal for JAX is that they allow for a more efficient computation by allowing JAX to parallelize operation over the different branches of a tree. And now this is a beautiful, beautiful visualization for us to understand they parallelize over the different branches. And this is because the XLA compiler can optimize the computation by fusing multiple operations together which can lead to a significant speed up. Remember I told you this is one of the beauty of an XLA compiler, that it uh, can fuse this together in a single GPU kernel. And again, this is why PyTrees are so powerful in JAX. By representing structured data as PyTrees, JAX can take advantage of this optimization and perform computation more efficiently. Another reason, and this is I, I had never thought about this. Our PyTrees are considered optimal for JAX is that they allow for easy batching of computations. Because PyTrees can represent structured data with varying shapes and sizes, they enable JAX to batch computations over multiple inputs of different sizes and shapes, which can be challenging with other data structure. So this allows JAX to perform computation more effectively and efficiently and in parallel, leading to faster training times. So you see, a very sensible answer. I had to prepare it a little bit, my chat GPT system, but yes, absolutely. And I say, can you explain your last answer, paragraph two, because I'm interested here in the fusing of multiple operations together. And system comes back. It is common to process data in batches to take advantage of parallel processing and optimization. However, batching data with different shapes and sizes can be challenging, you remember padding, as most data structures have fixed sizes and shape. This is where PyTree comes in handy. PyTree allows for a more flexible representation of structured data with varying sizes and shapes, yes, yes, yes. Consider a data set of images with different size. Using a pie tree, we can represent this dataset as a nested structure of arrays where each array corresponds to an image with a different shape. When we batch process this dataset, JAX can use the pie tree structure to batch computation over the different branches of our tree. This is so nice, with each branch representing a different image. This means we can perform computation on multiple images in parallel, even if they have different shapes and sizes. Yes, yes, yes. So, more detail? Happy? Yes. The idea of batching computation in Py with PyTrees in JAX. So, example. The model consists of two identical submodules that process each image independently and then combine the result to produce the final prediction. So we can represent this data set as a pie tree where each leaf node of the tree corresponds to an image with a different shape and each internal node of the tree corresponds to a pair of images. Here, really nice. Pair one, image one, image two. And as you can see, they have different sizes. Here's an example, yes, 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 beautiful. The top level nodes of the tree corresponds to the pair of images, yes, and each pair is represented as an internal node with two child nodes, image one and image two. The leaf nodes correspond to the individual images, of course, image one, image two. 
and each image is represented as an array with a different size. Of course, to batch now this process of this dataset efficiently takes advantage of the pie structure and batch computations of the different branches of the tree can process each pair of image in parallel by applying the same computation to the two branches of the tree and combining the results. Yes, yes, yes. Jax is beautiful. Jax handling of arrays with different shapes becomes critical. Jax can handle arrays with different shapes by padding them approximately to match the largest shape in the batch. We know this already. So I ask him, can you visualize the tree structure? Because I always like a visualization. And here we have it again. This is exactly this code. Pair one, pair two, image one, two, three, and four. And here we have pair one, image, and array. Beautiful. So this diagrammatic representation illustrates how the pie tree structure can represent structured data with varying shapes and sizes in a flexible and efficient manner. So, and I say, here's now an example. So we have here a layer one with our weights, and we have here an array of our weights, and we have here an array of our bias values. Our activation function for this layer is, for example, ReLU. And then we have the same for a second layer. Only in the second layer, we have an activation function, sigmoid. So explains PyTree has two internal nodes, label one and label two, which correspond to the two layers of the neural network. So you see we have now a corresponding between the layer structure of the network and the PyTree data structure. Each layer is represented as a nested tree with two internal loads labeled weights and activation. The weights node of each layer contains two child nodes labeled with weights and bias, which correspond bias of the layer. The weight matrix and the bias vector are represented as device arrays with different shapes, depending on the number of input and output neurons in the layer. The, act oops, the activation node of each layer consists of a string that specifies the activation function, layer 1, ReLU, layer 2, sigmoid activation function, nonlinear. Yes, yes, yes. And I ask him, can you show me a diagrammatic representation of exactly this pie tree, and now comes something interesting. You see, he builds here our layer one, we have here the weights, and we have here our weights and bias, and then suddenly in the activation function, we have another weights and bias. And you see what happens. Somehow he neglects this line and takes here also the weights and the bias from the second, from the next layer. And he explains this, and I say, hey, please check the activation node. Why does we suddenly have weights and biases here? Because we said this is just a ReLU function. And he comes back and says, hey, I apologize for the mistake. The activation node in the Pi tree should not have weights and bias. The correct diagrammatic representation is, and now he makes it correct. Layer 1, weights, weights and bias, activation function, ReLU. Layer 2, activation function, sigmoid. And as you can see, I say here, oh, that's, that's the right one. <laughs> Beautiful. And then I ask him, where would fusion by Jax happen? So you see, I'm approaching now the step slowly. And comes back, Jack, chat, GPT. <laughs> I just imagine how beautiful this must be in the chat, GPT plus version. But yeah, cannot afford the 20 bucks per month. In Europe, it would be plus tax. E. So in JAX function transformation, like fusion, are applied to a JAX function, not a PyTree data structure. Therefore, in the example I gave earlier, fusion would be applied to the function that operate on the PyTree representing the neural network parameters, not to the PyTree itself, which is of course correct because a data structure and a function structure interact with each other, but they are different objects. So, for an example, let's say we have a Jax function that applies a forward pass to a neural network represented by the Pi tree. So you see the neural network represented by the Pi tree. So we have now a correspondence of the data, of the nested structured data of a Pi tree representation and the network layers itself. We got the forward pass might involve several operations 
matrix multiplication, bias addition, activation function, checks can apply function transformation like fusion to this function to optimize its performance. So what, which would be three GPU kernels for multiplication, addition, and activation now get fused together in one GPU kernel, bringing us the speed improvement. So here now, a simple example, and this is really nice. So we define the activation function, we have a ReLU, and we have a sigmoid. Beautiful. And now let's have here a look at the forward pass. So for the first layer, we define here an H1. So we have the checks numpy, the dot product of our input X, and, and now have a look. Now we have a representation of a layer-specific parameter in a PyTree structure. And now here they come together the structural organization of our neural network layer and the structured data representation in PyTrees. Here you see them one-to-one. -one. I think it's such a beautiful example. So what we have, we have here just that we ate, that we have an addition with our bias and also two for the second layer, but here we go. Second layer and then return and then we JIT compile the forward pass function with a JIT forward. So, and then he goes on and he explains this, and this is so nice. The forward function takes the pi tree representing the neural network parameters, params, and the input array as input, and applies a forward pass to compute the output of the neural network. The forward JIT function is a compiled version of the forward, of the forward function, of course, that has been optimized by our JAX JIT compiler. So this is where we are here now, really close to machine code. JAX can apply function transformation like fusion to the forward JIT function to optimize its performance. So can fuse multiple versions in a single kernel executed on a GPU and a TPU. Yes, yes, yes. And then I say, okay, can you also, because I was interested in this explanatory function, of chat GPT. And I said, hey, can you explain line H2 in detail? And look, this is so beautiful. I have to show you this because I'm amazed by this. This is really like a teacher. It is, it is gorgeous. You just have to prepare it a little bit, but this system, unbelievable. So here we go. The line H2 in the forward function is, and this is really now example here, the line H2. So what do we have? We have a dot product of the, yeah, we do it here officially. The dot product of H1, then we have our parameters, and here we have our bias. So, and he says, let's break it down step by step. Do we remember? Step by step? Yes. So, the first params layer 2 weights refers to the pi tree node that represent the weights and biases for the second layer of the neural network. Specifically, params layer 2 weights W represent the weight matrix for the second layer, and the params layer 2 weights B represents the bias vector for the second layer. So this is exactly what we have here. We have params layer 2 weights W for the weight matrix, and here we have params layer 2 weights the bias vector. So you see, the data structure follows beautifully, as it should be, our layer architecture of in JAX here. So second, JAX numpy dot of H1 with this computes the dot product of the output H1 from the first layer with the weight matrix params layer 2. Weights, W, for the second layer. The dot product computes the sum of the element-wise products of the corresponding elements in the two matrices. Beautiful. And then what is left? Now left is the complete expression here. When we add here plus the bias, adds the bias vector. Params layer two weights bias for the second layer to the result of the dot product. This is a linear transformation you are familiar with. Beautiful. This is equivalent to computing the weighted sum of the inputs to the second layer, where the weights are given by the weight matrix and the bias are given by the bias vector. Beautiful.
And then we have H2 assigned to the result of the computation in step 3, which represents the output of the second layer of our complete neural network. So in says in summary, H line H2 computes the output of the second layer by taking the dot product of the output of the first layer with the weight matrix of the second layer, adding the bias vector for the second layer and applying the approximate activation function, in this case the sigmoid function. Because remember here, here H2, and I said the line H2, includes also the nonlinear sigmoid function. Beautiful. So this is for H2, and then I say, hey, can you do the same for the line H1? And it gives you exactly now the explanation for the line H1. The only difference is now we have here as our input, we have here the system input. So it says param layer one weights, it refers to the pi tree node that represents the weight and biases for the first layer, specifically yes, yes, yes. And then if you say, where is it? Here is my x, and here the checks numpy dot product of the input and the parameters of layer one, the weights, the weight matrix computes the dot product of the input array x with the weight matrix params layer one weights w for the first layer. The dot product computes the sum of element-wise products of the corresponding elements in the two matrices. Beautiful. So you see here, you really, even if you're new to this, you can ask him to give an explanation. And I have to tell you, reading this, I could not find a mistake. So if you find here an incorrectness, please leave a note in the, in the description of this video. But I tried this and now after a little bit of trial and error, I found, you see, it is a conversation. It is so nice. And then a little bit of theory. Is it correct to say that the structure of the data representation and the different pie trees follow the structure of the neural network itself? And so what a coincidence. Yes, it's correct. The structure of the pie tree data representation in JAX follows the structure of the neural network itself. Each node in the pie tree corresponds to a layer in the neural network and contains the weight and the biases for the layer. The pie tree is organized in a hierarchical manner. Each node contains the subnodes that correspond to the weights and biases for that particular layer. In other words, a pie tree is a direct representation of the structure of the neural network, as it should be, and the nested hierarchy of nodes reflects the nested hierarchy of layers in the neural network. And this is why pie trees are a natural and intuitive way to represent the parameters of a neural network in checks. And this is such a beautiful explanation given here within, I don't know, 10 minutes here with ChatGPT. If you would sit down as a beginner and, f and search this on the internet, you would need minimum an hour. So I kind of like this. Now, your example till now show no nested structure. Can you give me an example of a nested hierarchy of layers? So he comes back, of course, a neural network that has two branches, where each branch has two layers. So the first layer in each branch takes the input and produces an output, which is then passed to the second layer in each branch. Finally, the output of the second layer in each branch are concatenated to produce the final output of the neural network. So this is the easiest you can think of. You have branch one, branch two, and you have a self-similar structure. In branch one, you have layer one with the weights and an array for the weight matrix and for the bias vector. Layer two, identical, branch two, layer one, layer two, weights, biases. And then we have an output with the weights, with the weight matrix and the biases. Beautiful. And it tells us now in this pie tree, the root node contains three subnodes, branch one, as I showed you, branch two, and output. So we have the root node with three subnodes, branch one, branch two, and output. Branch one and branch two nodes each contain two subnodes, layer one and layer two, you've seen this, which corresponds to the layer in each branch of the neural network. And the output node contains a single node that corresponds to the final output layer of the neural network. It is nested, which each subnode contains its own set of subnodes. And then I say, can you show me a JAX function? 
and he comes back sure and now this is a nice example now here is the forward pass now for our network structure that we i mean that chat gpt built for us so we have here branch one we have branch two then we have the concatenation of the result and we have an output so you see this is exactly now in python as we have here our data structure so let's have a look at this yeah that you see everything this is it i don't know how to make this window bigger i'm not familiar with this but on my screen i have to scroll sorry so branch two we have now a new command tree map i will explain this in a second but just go with me it is a lambda function that you ap apply to each leaf so we have our tree map we have now the checks np dot product of our input x and now with the, our lambda the weight matrix and we add then to this multiplication the bias vector beautiful and then we have here the params branch one and in the second branch we have now the same same operation but of course we have now the references of branch two as a result then we concatenate this you know this jax and p concatenate branch one layer two branch two layer two because we connected two layers axis is one and then we have an output function and this output function you are familiar with it it's again the dot product of jax and p of our concatenated structure with the parameters of the outputs of the weights plus the parameters here of our bias vectors now let's have a look at this in detail because it is not as simple as you might think so this function takes in the nested params by the nested pi tree params here this is our nested pi tree as well as the input x so we have here two elements here in our forward function it first applies the first layer of each branch to the input using the tree map and the lambda function the tree map function applies this lambda function to every leaf node in the pi tree which is which in this case are the weights and the bias subnodes of the layer one subnodes in the branch one and branch two nodes so please keep in mind here this architecture of node and subnode it helps you a lot off but i show you here we can ask chat gpt to, to have a visualization for us so and the outputs of the first layer in each branch are then concatenated using the concatenate command and the concatenated output is passed through the final output layer using again the dot function and the addition of our bias vectors and then we have the final result beautiful so and then i ask for a diagrammatic view of the network structure i don't know what what words you use but when i say diagrammatic view of my network Either it is somehow in my definition, but he always understands what I mean. So we have here branch one, branch two, layer one, layer one, layer two, layer two. And then we have here concatenation and the output of our weights. So, and then I go and say, please explain the line branch one in the forward pass. So I go back here and I say, okay, this line here, can you give me a detailed explanation of this single line here in the forward pass? So, and here we go. Sure, let's break down the line. Branch one is the tree map of the lambda function p for our uh, jax and p dot product of our input x and p of the weights plus the bias vector. And we have here the params of branch one in the forward function I showed earlier. First, the params branch one, and this is exactly here, the second term, refers to the pi tree representing the parameters of branch one. Well, no, this was, this was a surprise. So recall that branch one has two layers, layer one and layer two. So params branch one is a pi tree with the following structure, layer one with the weights and the biases, and layer two with the weights and we have the arrays of the weights and the biases now tree map applies the provided lambda function to every leaf node of the pi tree we know this now 
params branch one. So params branch one is now the pi tree that we apply everything to. Now you know why we have this term here, the last term here in our bracket. Because as I will show you in a second, this is the general definition of tree map. The lambda function takes a single pi tree node p, our lambda x if you want, representing the parameters of a single layer and performs a forward pass through that layer given an input x. Specifically, it computes the dot product between x and the weight matrix way, w, adds the bias vector b and returns the result. Now, interesting from a dimensional point of view, the output of the tree map is a pi tree branch one with the same structure as the data structure params branch one, but with each Sorry, we just hit a hard return. Yeah, thank you, ChatGPT, for letting me in. So we continue. The output of the tree map is a pi tree branch one with the same structure as params branch one, but with each leaf node replaced by the output of the lambda function applied to that leaf node. So this is so nice. So we have now the same structure, but with each leaf node replaced by the output. So in other words, branch one has the same structure as params branch one, but with the weights and biases now of each layer replaced by the output calculation of that layer given the input X. So here we have it, this beautiful coexistence of the data structure and our functional programming such a beautiful beautiful thing that it works so nicely and then of course what is the general notation for tree map we know this now from example but just to be clear to be precise tree map in jax has this general structure where f here our first term is a function that takes in one or more leave nodes from the input pi tree and returns a new leave node or nodes Pi tree is a nested data structure, yes, our pi tree, containing leaf nodes to be mapped over by this function, exactly what we just apply. And then we have some additional pi trees, if any, that should have the same structure, but we can do something else. I will show you a little bit later. So the return value of tree map is a new pi tree with the same structure. Yes, of course it has to be the same structure since we update its values as the input pi tree, but with each leaf node now replaced by the output calculation of this function when we apply this function to that leaf node. So it is more or less the typical lambda function that you know from Python, but now applied to a nested complex pi tree structure. So nice here this explanation why here in JAX, and if you apply it to neural network in FLAX, the pi tree structure is such a powerful instrument. But you know, the nice part is you can also ask ChatGPT to explain other JAX commands for you. I ask you about JAX the tree utility, the JAX module that has several utility functions. It tells me pi tree is a nested structure of Python containers. We have our lists our tuples, our decks, and our leave nodes. And here are some key functions provided by Jack's tree utility. The first one is a tree flatten. So it takes a pie tree and returns a tuple of two lists. The first list contains all the leave nodes of the pie tree, and the second list contains a path of indices into the original pie tree that leads to each leave node. Then you have tree unflatten. Well, this is of course the other thing, inserting the leaf nodes at a specific path. We have tree map I just showed you, applies a function to each leaf node in a pi tree and returns a new pi tree with the same structure, but with the functions applied to each leaf node. This is a beautiful functionality. You will encounter this a lot of. And we have tree multimap. It applies a function to corresponding leaf nodes 
in multiple pi trees with the same structure and returns a new pi tree with the same structure as the inputs, but with the functions applied to each corresponding set of leaf nodes. In tree leaves, it returns a flattened list of all the leaf nodes in a pi tree. As you can see, ChatGPT can be a powerful instrument if you want to investigate something new in code, if you have your own kind of question, and I would say, give ChatGPT the free version I tried.